Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm going to be going through all the puzzles I did in the month of March. Um, I'll be doing a quick little review and giving you my thoughts on each one. And then at the very end, I'll let you know which was my least favorite and also which one I love the most. So let's go through all these. Um, there's no particular order here. I've sort of just grouped uh, brands together. And there is actually a mix of uh, puzzles that were in videos and any of those uh, videos I will link up the top so you can go check those out. Uh, some puzzles were from my Instagram feed and some were just ones I felt like doing. So I guess we'll just start here. So this first one is by the brand Jekko and it's a 1000 piece panoramic called Magic India. They tend to do a lot of panoramics um, in their sort of collection and that's they're the only type I've done but I've enjoyed them all and this one was no exception I definitely enjoyed it I really love the artwork it's like really colorful and there's like a lot of patterns and a very sort of busy lively artwork so yeah really beautiful and um, I guess I felt a bit so-so about the pieces um, the backing of Gecko puzzles is paper so that could pose a problem but so far I haven't really had any issues with it and I didn't in this puzzle um, but this puzzle, the pieces were very glossy, so that was a little bit of an issue. And I did find a few false fits, like not too many, but you know, sometimes it, because uh, there were a lot of patterns that some were a bit similar, or it was like such a busy puzzle, sometimes it was a little tricky with a few false fits here and there. Um, but apart from that, you know, I enjoyed the overall experience and would happily do Jekko uh, puzzles again. So yeah, I think I'd still recommend this one. Uh, yeah, just a beautiful and fun puzzle. And then next up is one from a video. Um, and this one is by the brand Two Bird Press and it's called Puzzled Cats. And I really loved this one. I love the puzzle and the puzzling experience. So, you know, it's just a I just found like the image really adorable and just really fun and colorful. And I really love the quality. So. If you've ever done a Grateful House puzzle, the quality is very similar. So if you enjoyed that, you probably enjoy their puzzles as well. Um, but yeah, the pieces are very matte, no like sheen at all. And they fit together beautifully, like a very comfortable fit. You could do a puzzle pickup, but they're also not too tight that you can't undo them. Uh, there's barely any puzzle dust. Um, yeah, just a really, really enjoyable puzzling experience. So yeah, I've got another one in my collection from them. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing that one sometime. But yeah, definitely recommend this one. Really, really enjoyed it. And then next is a really gorgeous puzzle. This one is the 1000 piece Tiger Lounge puzzle from the artist Elena Essex. And I've done a few of her puzzles and I really love them. They're always favorites in my collection. Um, I just love like how colorful her artwork is and it's always really pretty and whimsical. And yeah, this one's no exception. It's just a really fun, beautiful image. And I really quite like the quality of her puzzles. They're like quite a matte finish um, and the pieces usually fit together pretty well and cardboard backing and um, not too much puzzle dust. Can't quite remember, but I don't remember the puzzle dust being too much of a problem. Um, but yeah, I just really enjoyed this one. Um, and, you know, definitely looking forward to doing more of her puzzles. And yeah, if you like colorful, uh, fun, beautiful puzzles. Definitely recommend checking hers out. Um, yeah, so I don't think there's much more to say about this one. Just had a great experience with this one as well. The next one, not so much of a great experience. So this is by the brand Slow Lane Society, which is an Australian brand and it, they're fairly new. So I was keen to check this puzzle out and I picked this one because I really like the image. It's called Lone Pony and it's 1000 pieces. And it's, there's nothing wrong with the image. I love the image, but the puzzle itself was a bit of a nightmare. Um, there were only sort of like two piece variations um, and there were so many false fits. I don't think I've ever done a puzzle before that has ever had this many false fits. I almost felt like every second piece was a false fit. Like it was just, it wasn't a handful. It was just constant. Like it, it was, I, I feel a bit, uh, like, you know, worn out thinking about it, to be honest. Yeah, this puzzle just took me way too long to do because of like all the false fits. Um, yeah, it was just really tough and not at all an enjoyable experience. Um, 
apart from that, I feel like the brand actually has a lot going for it, like beautiful packaging and, you know, beautiful designs and stuff. And, uh, you know, they have sort of said that they're going to try and, um, you know, work on their piece quality and piece fit for any future puzzle releases. So fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I can't recommend this one at the moment. Um, yeah, despite their beautiful image, it was just a really horrible <laughs> puzzling experience. So let's um, not talk about that one anymore. So let's move these over here and we'll do some of these ones. Um, oh, where do we start? There's, so, there's quite a lot this month, which is good, getting through them. Um, so I did this lovely one from Cloudberries, which is called Backyard 1000 Pieces. Um, yeah, I just really love the sort of the sort of blush background color and all the very pretty plants. It's sort of very uh, fashionable at the moment because you know everyone loves indoor plants and things like that. So yeah, I just thought it looked really cool and funky and yeah, really pretty. Um, yeah, not too much to say about it. I just really enjoyed it. Um, I quite enjoy Cloudberry's designs and their like piece quality. Um, yeah, I do find sometimes their puzzles kind of have false fits sometimes. This one wasn't too bad because, um, I don't know, I could sort of tell where pieces were going to go. Like it wasn't too, too difficult, even though it is does have a lot of leaves and stuff. It was still actually pretty like distinct and easy to figure out where pieces were going. So it wasn't yeah too much trouble. Um, but yeah, I, I like Cloudberries, so definitely enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, I find like Cloudberries, they're for the most part, apart from having some false fits, their pieces actually fit together quite nicely and um, yeah, they hold together well and um, they have a nice sort of, almost like a waxy feel to the top of the surface. It's quite unusual, but I, I quite like it. And yeah, always beautiful designs. So yeah, I'd recommend this one if you're really into plants and that sort of thing, you, you know, you might enjoy this one. And then this one I did quite recently uh, this is also an Australian brand. It's called La La Land and they, they don't just do puzzles. They do like homewares and things like that too. But it's a 1000 piece and it's called Frida's Paradise and it yeah, features Frida Kahlo and she's sort of surrounded by these lovely tropical plants and birds and animals. Um, yeah, just a beautiful image, lovely illustration or I guess painting. And yeah, very vibrant. And I don't normally do a lot of sort of people puzzles. I'm not really a huge fan of having people in my puzzles, but I just couldn't pass up this one. I just thought it was a really beautiful image. And you know, it's Frida Kahlo, so yeah, very cool. Um, so this was the first time I was doing this brand and um, the pieces, they had paper backing, which I, again, not a huge fan of, but they everything was fine with this puzzle. I didn't really have any, uh, there was the backing wasn't coming off any of the pieces and there was like no splitting or anything, so it was fine. Um, the pieces, I'm not, I felt sort of mixed about the pieces. Like they were nice and thick and had a really nice feel to them, but they were quite glossy on top and the fit was quite loose. So you definitely couldn't do like a puzzle pickup. Um, but the colors were very vibrant on it. So it's kind of interesting because uh, the way the pieces, like the sort of lines between each piece, I guess, reminded me of like the strong lines you get in like a spring box. But um, the piece shape, like the pieces are completely different to Springbok. They're more like a regular style. They're not like the quirky, funky pieces like Springbok. So it is still a very like standard cut puzzle, but I sort of was reminded of that when putting this one together. I had like very distinct lines between the pieces. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely do more of their puzzles, partly because I have a bunch in my collection. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, but they have some really beautiful designs, some really cute cat ones. But yeah, the piece fit isn't my favorite, but um, but I feel like the quality overall like wasn't too bad. And you know, I still really had a had a fun time doing this one. I I don't think there were any false fits. Um, yeah, and there was a little bit of puzzle dust, but it wasn't too bad. Yeah, so I think overall it was still a positive experience. Um, yeah, just love the image. And then this one I did very recently as well, and I did a video on it. This is from Gibson's and it's one of their fairly recent puzzles. Puzzles. It's a 1000 piece one and it's called Perfect Plants. And yeah, I really 
love the image this beautiful sort of uh, very busy pattern of cute cats and beautiful plants with this lovely sort of pinky bluey like a bit sort of retro color scheme so yeah really um yeah i really enjoyed putting this one together the obviously love the image and the theme of the puzzle and the i found the quality of this like really good i've done some gibson's puzzles before and i've enjoyed those and yeah i really enjoyed this one the pieces uh, fit together very snugly and comfortably um, they're very thick and very lush um, yeah and a bit of puzzle dust but actually it wasn't too much of an issue most of it stayed in the box and what else like mm, a little bit of sheen but like not too much and i think that's really dependent like on your lighting um but yeah overall i really enjoy gibson's quality like they're definitely a brand i think fairly highly of so yeah i really really enjoyed this one um and yeah i don't think there's much else to say i think if you like cats and plants and you want a nice quality puzzle definitely give this one a go and then um oh, let's go through all the gibson's ones together since you know we might as well so another one from gibson's that i got was this uh tropical 500 piece circular puzzle so yeah did these in a video together and I really enjoyed this one as well the quality is a bit different on this one it's uh, the pieces don't hold together as well and yeah they're not as thick but it was still a really like lovely experience like obviously the image is just gorgeous so colorful and very like detailed and busy and fun and everything and I like that it was just a round puzzle it's like it's sometimes just nice to do different shape puzzles just for a bit of a change and you know so you can enjoy the novelty of it um yeah but i feel like the pieces fit together very nicely but they were a bit more of a loose fit so you couldn't really pick up big sections or anything like that um but it didn't bother me too much because it was only 500 pieces i could easily reach like the whole puzzle so it wasn't too much of a big deal um yeah and it had a bit of puzzle dust and a little bit of sheen as well but neither were really too problematic so yeah, I would definitely give more of these style puzzles a go in the future. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend this one too if you sort of want something, you know, fairly fun and quick to do and you're a fan of like, I guess, flowers and birds and plants and things. It's, yeah, it's a really pretty puzzle. And then another one, which is a bit of an odd one from Gibson's is this Pringle one. So you may have seen it online, but yeah, I didn't realize at first that Gibson's made these. Um, so I did sneak this one in the end of that video. If you did stay till the end and watch it, you will see this one being featured. Um, yeah, it's a cute little double-sided 250 piece puzzle. Yeah, one side just features the chips inside, like the stack of chips, and the other side is the packaging. Um, yeah, the quality of this one like wasn't the greatest. Um, one side's very glossy and the pieces don't hold together very well. They're very loose like you, I tried to flip it over, but that like that wasn't happening. I had to basically turn pieces over individually. Um, yeah, so like the, I think the side with the packaging on is like sort of the top side. Um, it's like, yeah, the nice glossy beveled sort of side. But then the other side with the chips is like that sort of papery kind of like cardboardy papery finish. And that's like the kind of, I guess, it's meant to be like underneath like the bottom side of the puzzle but obviously they've printed the chips on that so it's like i think that happens with a lot of double-sided puzzles one side's always like the nicer side i guess yeah so but you know it was a pretty inexpensive puzzle i got it on sale and it's just a novelty puzzle so i wasn't really expecting great things from it but you know i'm happy enough with what it was it's just a fun silly little puzzle to do and you know i think it'd make a good little you know gift or stocking stuff or something like that or just a fun one to have on your desk at work you know like it's it's just a bit of fun really so i don't think you can expect too much from it so if, yeah if you like pringles maybe check this one out and then what should we go through next maybe these two since they've been sitting here waiting for me so this one here is uh, the Jungle Jaguar puzzle from Wentworth and it's 250 pieces. So this is a wooden puzzle and I really love this one. Um, 
So this is my second only Wentworth puzzle that I've done. And the first one I did was quite different because it was like a bit of a challenge puzzle and it only had geometric shapes. Whereas this one is sort of like one of their more, I guess, normal or regular puzzles where it had all these beautiful whimsy pieces. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, obviously I picked the image that I really liked, which is this like gorgeous sort of pattern of these like jaguars and jungle plants and flowers. Like it's super colorful and vibrant. Um, so I only picked 250 pieces. Like I think you can get this one in like multiple sizes because I figured even at the small size, it'll be a bit tricky with this sort of very busy pattern. And I was right, it was not the easiest 250 piece puzzle. It definitely took me a little bit of time, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a, a fun little challenge. And yeah, the pieces are nice and vibrant and nice and sort of thick and had that lovely wood fire smell. Um, and yeah, the there were so many whimsies in this. I was really impressed. Um, like I've done some wooden puzzles before that sort of only have, a, you know, a few whimsies in it or just a handful, but I wasn't expecting this one to have as many because it's the smallest size, but I was, yeah, really impressed. Like, I think there was like 15 or something in there. Like it was packed to the brim with cute whimsy pieces. So they were all like jungle cats, like some were jaguars and others were like lions. I think there's even like a normal household cat. Yeah, they're all sort of like jungle cats or cat related. So yeah, it was, yeah, really cute. And I like that the sort of pieces match the theme of the puzzle. So yeah, I think it was really well done. And I have some more of theirs in my collection waiting for me to do. So I'm definitely looking forward to those. Oh, and I would definitely recommend this one. So yeah, I think if you can try a Wentworth with Whimsy pieces, I think you'd have a lot of fun. And then this one I did quite recently is also by an Australian brand. So this is from the brand Hinkler and it's just a 300 piece and it's sort of part of their Mindful Jigsaw uh, like Elevate series. Like it's meant to be, I guess it's aimed at adults, but it's meant to be sort of a relaxing puzzle, something to just, you know, focus on and meditate, that sort of thing. And it's a fairly new one and they've got like, they're all very colorful, like bright, bold sort of designs. And this one's called Psychedelic Florals. And yeah, like it was actually pretty tricky to do. Um, just be, like the colors and patterns are just, they just were sort of tricky to put together. So I really, yeah, I really love the patterns and colors, but yeah, it was actually, uh, yeah, a little bit challenging to put together. So it wasn't, a, it was a kind of, I guess, time consuming 300 pieces. So sort of surprised me, I was thinking it would be like done in like five minutes, but no, it like took a while. So, um, which isn't bad because sometimes it's nice to do a smaller piece count puzzle, but still find it like a bit challenging or, you know, a bit, you know, where you end up doing a bit of problem solving to get it done. I don't mind that. Like, I think it makes you feel like you're getting more out of your puzzle if it takes a bit longer, I think. But yeah, love the colors of this one. Love this sort of floral sort of 60s psychedelic design, but I like that it's sort of very pastel -y. Um So I've got a couple more from them, but yeah, quite liked it. Um, the quality is like not the most fantastic. I mean, this was like five Australian dollars. So it was very inexpensive. Um, so the pieces are very, they're quite large and they're very thin cardboard. Um, they hold together okay. Like it's sort of a 50-50 whether you can pick up sections. Sometimes they stay together, sometimes they don't. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the giant pieces because it meant I still had to use like my 1000 piece puzzle board. Like it still took up a lot of space and it meant it was really hard to like spread all the pe like pieces out in front of me because I sort of wanted to do that and then turn them all over, but I just was running out of space because the pieces were so huge. <laughs> um, so that's probably my only gripe really is that the pieces were just, they just felt too big, but, and you know, and the cardboard was quite thin, so it was a bit tricky trying to pick them up sometimes, especially with like nails. So, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I think for like the price point, it's fine, like it's really inexpensive and you're getting a beautiful puzzle and the quality's still reasonable. Like it's, you know, it's, it's pretty inexpensive quality, I guess, but you know, like it's still, the pieces still fit together and there wasn't too much puzzle dust. And yes, it was still a overall fairly enjoyable puzzling experience. So yeah, I think if you're just looking for a little cheapy and just a quick, quick-ish, puzzle to do like yeah these are pretty fun so 
Uh, yeah, as far as I know, these are only available in Australia though. So I grabbed this one from Australian Kmart. Um, so you might not be able to get this if you're overseas, but yeah, if you're in Australia, you can check these out. And then we still got a few more to get through. We, it was a pretty busy month, which is good. Um, so let's do some of these bigger ones here before we move on to those. Um, so this one I just did recently, it's called, it's by the brand Holdson and it's from the Mistress of the Pride Lands collection. There's like four in the collection and this one's called Egyptian Princess and it's 1000 pieces. I've been meaning to do this one for a while because it was actually part of my declutter video. Um, but in that video I had still a couple hold some puzzles to do. So I actually only got around to doing this one recently, but uh, better late than never, right? But I can definitely, uh, I definitely feel like decluttering this one was absolutely the right decision. Like I, you know, just in case I forgot, I had a nice reminder of all the things I didn't like about this puzzle. <laughs> uh, for a start, I just, I just hate the pieces <laughs> so much. They're just so thin, like, it makes, it seriously makes this puzzle look like, a, you know, so a million times better, honestly. Uh, so this, and, and this is a lot more expensive. So this, the pieces are really thin cardboard. They do not hold together at all. The, the pieces are so loose that if you like bump a section, everything just sort of goes flying and it's a real pain in the behind. Um, they're kind of glossy as well. And I noticed like, I don't know if it's every image, but this image, there were pixelated, areas like the woman and the cats themselves were sort of fine but like a lot of the sort of designs and the columns they were quite pixelated so i was like oh that's not great so yeah um so the image in general it is a beautiful image like the the, the artist has done a really lovely job but yeah just unfortunate as well that you know the some of the image is sort of pixelated so yeah pretty disappointing so yes, definitely made the right choice on getting rid of this one. Um, yeah, so I I can safely say I don't think I'll be doing any more holds and puzzles. It's really unfortunate because they do have some really beautiful collections. And I always see them and I'm like, oh, that's lovely. And I'm like, oh, it's holds and like, so I sort of get disappointed. I'm like, definitely not getting it. So yeah, I don't recommend this brand. Um, it, it's a New Zealand brand, but it's you can get it in Australia as well. I don't know about overseas. But unfortunately, yeah, I, I just don't really recommend it unless you want to have a painful puzzling experience. And then another puzzle I did this month is this beautiful one from Casterland. It's a 1500 piece and it's called Tropical Trio. And I absolutely love the artwork on this one. I think it's just beautiful and I've sort of noted down the artist's name. So I'm gonna be like hunting out their, their work now because this is, um, yeah, stunning. Actually, let's, the artist is, just in case you want to know, uh, David Gauchut, Gau Gauchut. I'm not sure how I how you meant to say that. Um, I might pop that up on the screen, actually, just in case you're interested. Um, but yeah, just beautiful, beautiful artwork. Really, yeah, I just think it's such an eye-catching piece. Um, so apart from the beautiful image, let's talk about the pieces and quality. So it's 1,500 pieces, but... Uh, the pieces are actually, I sort of like didn't realize this when I bought it. I was expecting this is going to be a normal size puzzle. I'd be getting out my giant puzzle board. No, it's actually the same size as a normal like standard 1000 piece, which means you've got very cute teeny tiny pieces in this. So they're like, it's not quite as small as like, I guess a micro puzzle or something, but they're pretty teeny tiny. They're very cute. Also very easy to lose. So you've got to be careful with these puzzles. Um, I believe like Bluebird as well also sort of do this. Like I've actually got, I think one of their 1500 piece ones and it's the same sort of thing where the pieces are like shrunk down to sort of still be like a 1000 piece size. But yeah, I think it's really interesting. I don't, I don't mind it. You just have to be careful not to lose pieces. Um, yeah, the pieces themselves, so it's a bit like Clementoni in that they have lovely shapes and you don't really get false fits or anything. Like I find the actual like, variation of the pieces very nice um, and nice cut and everything but they're just a very loose fit like you can't pick up sections at all which was a bit frustrating with this puzzle um, you know because it's still a 1000 piece size so you know you're still trying to reach areas and you're still like you know I started on these flowers first so there I was 
with these like lovely flowers made, but then I had to slide them around the board instead of being able to just pick them up. So it would have been nice to be able to actually pick up sections. So definitely a bit of a downer, I guess, a not so positive point with this brand. Um, but apart from that, I really enjoyed it. Like there wasn't too much puzzle dust and not too much glare or anything. Like the pieces aren't particularly glossy. They're just sort of normal. They're not like extremely matte, but they're not really glossy either. They're sort of, I don't know, somewhere in between. Um, yeah, but you know, um, I don't know, like there's, yeah, it's sort of mixed because I love the image, but yeah, I obviously have a few mixed feelings about the pieces, but I think overall, I still really enjoyed the experience. I don't know if it was like, I was a bit swayed by the nice image, maybe, um, because maybe if the image wasn't so nice, I'd be a bit more, I guess, like picky about it. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but I'd probably still give this brand a go. Um, I don't know if I'm going to like race out and buy a whole heap, but you know, if I saw another one that was a really nice image, maybe I would consider it. Uh, so yeah, it, definitely an interesting brand. And then, uh, what do we do? We'll do these three. So we've got here this really cute little 200 piece Ravensburger. Um, yeah, this is sort of like the first time I've done like a small piece count by them that's like aimed at kind of a more adult or mature audience. And these seem to be a fairly new collection. They're sort of like, it says relax, enjoy, and you're meant to do it in 40 minutes. So yeah, they're sort of like a more mature image. And then I guess a bit like these sort of Hinkler ones just designed as a quick little puzzle to do that you can just relax and meditate and that sort of thing. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, beautiful image, like of course it's a cat and I had to get it and but I, I love the colors in it, like these pinky purple flowers, it's really pretty. Um, and the pieces are the same size Ravensburger pieces that you get like in all their other puzzles basically. Um, so like if you did a normal 500 piece or 1000 piece it's the same size. So the, this image, uh, this completed puzzle ends up being quite little, which is not bad because it means you could like have it on your desk or something like that. So it doesn't take up too much room. But um, yeah, the only weird thing I noticed was this surface was quite sort of shiny and glossy. Like not, not, it wasn't too, too bad in that. Like I didn't get so much glare, but it was, I found it to be like kind of glossier than some of my other Ravensburger puzzles. So yeah, I don't know what that was about. It was quite, interesting it was just it wasn't bad or good it was just different but apart from that the pieces and the piece fit were like the same as all my other Ravensburgers so yeah but uh yeah I definitely would recommend this one I had great a great time doing it and yeah I've got my eye on a couple of others from this little series so if I can get those I will um but yeah just really enjoyed it it was yeah beautiful and a fun experience and then this puzzle is called, it's from Good Puzzle Co, which is actually part of Gallison. Um, and this is a 500 piece one and it is just called Cats and Flowers. And I just had a lot of fun doing this one. It's just a really lovely image. It's actually sort of nine images of these different cats in little, I guess like little flower garden areas. So it's very pretty and cute. Uh, yeah, just a really fun sort of simple puzzle. Um, and it's sort of uh, meant to be a bit more like, it, it's at a sort of more, I guess, cheaper or inexpensive price point than Gallison's normal puzzles. And this one's sort of meant to be a bit more like sustainable and environmentally friendly. Like even um, the plastic bag that the puzzle pieces came in is like compost, uh, compostable? Wait, you can put it in the compost. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, like it will like break down really easily. So I was like, oh, that's really cool. Um, and it didn't come shrink wrapped or anything. I think, I don't know if it had stickers. No, I don't think it was even sealed with stickers. It's just, you can just open the box right up. But yeah, so very interesting. Um, so it says like, also like 1% of proceeds go directly towards environmental nonprofits. And yeah, so it's meant to just be, you know, socially and environmentally better. Um, and I have to say, I really enjoyed this one. Um, the price point was quite reasonable. I really loved the artwork and the pieces were actually pretty reasonable. Like they were a thinner cardboard, um, but they still held together like, okay. They're probably similar to the Hinkler one in that 
thin, thinnish cardboard, but sort of a 50-50 on pieces holding together. So you could actually, you know, do one of the cat squares. And for the most part, I was able to like lift them up and move them around. So yeah, I like did a whole pile of the cat squares and then sort of put them in order. So yeah, actually it was like, uh, yeah, pretty, a pretty good puzzling experience. And I'm trying to think, I don't think there was particularly a lot of puzzle dust, I think a little bit. Um, and oh, and the pieces are a bit bigger. Like I think it's actually fairly reminiscent of a normal Gallison 500 piece in that the pieces tend to be a bit of a larger size. And the piece shapes of these were like pretty similar, like some of those sort of quirky almost standard but a little bit quirky piece shapes of Galliston. If you've ever done it, you'll sort of know what I mean. Um, so yeah, kind of like a similar, it's like they used almost like the same die cuts or something, but different cardboard. So yeah, the cardboard's a lot thinner than a regular Galliston. But yeah, I would definitely do another one of these or get more. Like I've got the dog version of this and definitely looking forward to doing that one. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend these. I think they're like a fun, environmentally friendly more or less expensive version of Gallison and some cute designs I haven't seen too many of them out there there are a couple of other designs I've sort of seen but hopefully they'll release some more but yeah definitely enjoyed it and then this one I didn't enjoy so much I had a couple of people like sort of mentioned that actually this cardinal brand wasn't that great so it's 500 pieces and it's called Dreaming Girl and it actually came as a two pack. There was like a donuts one as well, which I still haven't done, um, but I did this one and I love the image. Don't get me wrong. I think the artwork is beautiful. It's just a really nice image um, and beautiful colors. But yeah, I really didn't like the pieces at all. They're really thin cardboard. They absolutely do not hold together at all. They just have the loosest fit. Um, there was quite a bit of puzzle dust as well. Um, the pieces are very big, so it took up a lot of space as well, which seems to be the case with a lot of 500 pieces. They tend to like decide, let's just make the pieces bigger, which I'm like, I don't really get that. Like just cause it's smaller doesn't mean you can make the pieces bigger, but whatever, that's personal. Um, yeah, so I don't think I would actually get this brand again. Um, yeah, I think they have some beautiful designs and it's a very, it's a, like a pretty inexpensive puzzle. like. There's a few of them out on like Amazon where you get like two in the series and you get them for a pretty like discounted price. But even still, I think just the quality is not that great. Um, I think like even if you're paying a low price point, it's still not worth it if you're having a, well, just not having a fun puzzling experience or are feeling frustrated while puzzling, like that's not really worth any price, I don't think. So yeah, I definitely don't think I'd recommend these, unfortunately. Like I think the idea behind it's nice, but the execution is not that great. I think the Gallison one did like a much better job. Um, and plus I don't think this one's particularly like environmentally friendly or anything like that. So yeah, so a bit unfortunate cause yeah, lovely image, but yeah, is what it is. And we're down to our last couple, I think. I think we've done all, yes, we've done all of those. So down to the last two, which are both Clementonis. So let's do this one. Um, yeah, so I enjoyed both of these. And again, these were in a video. Um, I've done like Clementoni before. Uh, well, I love the images on these for a start. Like obviously you can probably guess why I picked them. Colorful rainbows and gradients and yeah, just lovely designs. Um, this one was really, really challenging to do. It was basically a challenge puzzle. It, yeah, it was really hard to do. Um, I don't know if I'd do it again anytime soon because it was so difficult, but I think if you like colorful puzzles and you want a really challenging puzzle, then this is for you. If you don't like challenge puzzles, maybe don't do this one, but maybe pick one of their other ones in the sort of color boom collection. Oh, I forgot to mention, these are both from the color boom collection. They're Clementoni and this, yeah, this one's a thousand pieces and it's called Whirl. Um, yeah, so the main issue I have with Clementoni, it's kind of similar to Casterland actually. It's the pieces are lovely and like just, a, well, yeah, they're nice and sort of fairly thick and very like thick, hard, sturdy cardboard. Um, and the piece shapes are like quite nice and have nice like piece variation, but they have the loosest fit. <laughs> 
like the same with caster land they just don't hold together at all so you can't pick up sections at all so you're you're there sliding sections around on the board instead um, but I tend to make an exception if it's a design I really like which is sort of the case with these two um, so yeah I, I have mixed feelings about Clementoni like I definitely like them because I think overall the puzzling experience is pleasant um, and the quality in general is very nice but yeah the piece fits always just really loose so eh. <laughs> but yeah this one was uh, I recommend it if you want a challenge basically otherwise steer clear um, and then yeah this other one I, I would definitely recommend this to anyone like this is a 500 piece one and it's called waves and it's still a little bit challenging but nowhere near the level of this one um, but yeah I think it's just a really gorgeous image love how vibrant it is uh, yeah and say suffers from the same positives and negatives as this one basically so yeah loose fit but still very nice quality pieces in general and yeah really enjoyed the puzzling experience with this one so yeah I definitely recommend this one as well um, so that is everything I feel like I've been talking like a million miles an hour but that's everything we've done for the month so in a sec I'll come back and we'll quickly uh, look at my least favorite and my favorite puzzle for the month so I've picked out a couple of puzzles here that are my least favorite and also that I love the most so the award for least favorite puzzle of the month of March goes to the Lone Pony puzzle by uh, Slow Lane Society mainly just because it was just a really unpleasant puzzling experience which is really disappointing because it's such a gorgeous image and there was a lot of potential with this brand and puzzle um, but yeah just sadly just didn't make the cut and I really can't recommend this one but to keep things positive uh, my favorite puzzle of the month was this really adorable puzzled cats one by two bird press like I said love the image it was really fun and colorful and I absolutely love the quality just can't really fault it so many uh, great things about it and it just made for such a really fun and just really enjoyable puzzling experience and I would definitely recommend this brand uh, they're quite reasonably priced I think uh, especially for the artwork and quality that they have on offer and they have yeah a few fun puzzles in their collection so definitely check them out I will leave all the details for all these puzzles in the description below so go check them out if there's any you're interested in and I guess in the comments below let me know what you thought of all the puzzles I did this month are there any here that you've done as well or that you'd like to try you know what are your thoughts on them yeah let me know your thoughts and experience in the comments below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles and for even more puzzle content you can check me out over on instagram at jigsaw underscore juby thanks so much and see you next time bye